Rock the Stage Show. Each week, international media expert Rich Bontrager has in-depth and personal conversations with celebrities, top leaders, authors, speakers, and media professionals. Now, from the Rock the Stage studios, here's your host, The Trigger, Rich Bontrager. Well, 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 welcome, welcome back to another Sunday night. 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Rock the Stage, bringing you amazing guests, insights as we travel the world. Does anyone remember the wide world of sports spanning the globe? Well, that's, that's kind, of, kind of what we do here on Rock the Stage. We span the globe from the best people to come in and talk about their amazing careers. It could be actors, film directors, writers, singers, and so much more. And we've had such an amazing time doing this for the last four years. And tonight, you're in for a very special treat because you know, you know this guest. You, you, you love this guest, but you don't really know this guest. We're going to get deeper into that as well tonight as we explore. But, you know, I'm a world traveler. I love to travel. My family traveled all my upbringing. We went to Mexico, to Canada in a mini motorhome. I have traveled all over the U.S. in cars. Growing up, the navigational voice in my car was my mother reading the map, pulling it out, and telling dad where to go. <laughs> sometimes that was good and sometimes that wasn't so good. When I got independent on my own, of course, I fell in love with Siri. That amazing voice that we plug into and helps it get to the right place, the right turn all the time, except when she says, renavigate, renavigate, renavigate. Okay, that's the one phrase I don't like Siri tell me is a recalculate, recalculate, or renavigate. We're going to talk about all that here tonight as well. But that voice is a voice everyone knows, but you don't know how much more there is to that. You're going to be amazed, blown away, because I was when I got deeper into learning about this. You've heard the, my guest tonight. Probably a billion different devices has had her voice going and carrying her voice in the many GPSs. It's gone worldwide. She's originally from Australia, and that's why I love the accent, by the way, because I switched from the American voice I switched to the Australian voice. It was even better. <laughs> She's an award-winning singer, songwriter, author of two different books. Harry Connick Jr. called her voice hypnotic on his national talk show when she's not telling people where to go. She's a practicing yoga and most likely negotiating screen time, the limits of screen time with her teenage son. Who can relate to that? Please join me in welcoming the entertainer, the author, and the only woman that can tell your man where to go and follow directions. The GPS girl herself, here is Karen Jacobson. <laughs> Hello, Rich. How are you? I am doing marvelous. I have been pumped to have this conversation because seriously, when I started to use the navigational tools, the American voice was the American voice. When they did the update and they said you can do different voices, I switched to Australian right away. And I've been listening to your voice for years and years and years. So it's nice to finally meet you. Here I am in real life. <laughs> you know, what is it about that space? Because you've been the voice, the voice, the voice. First of all, how did you even get into that? Were you a broadcaster? Were you reading books online? What did you do to get pulled into being serious? I'm a singer-songwriter, so I've been writing songs since I was very small and playing the piano and singing. And when I lived in Australia, I was singing jingles in a lot of different recording studios. And many of those recording studios also recorded voiceovers. And voiceovers, of course, are the, the spoken word uh, for commercials and uh, on radio and television and in cinema so I did a lot of voiceover work when I lived in Sydney, Australia. I moved to New York City with my suitcase and my dream. And not long after that, a client was looking for a native Australian female voiceover artist living in the northeast of the United States. And I saw that brief and I'm like, that is a description of me. This must be my job. And that does not happen that often. No. So you had not been, like for me, I was in radio long time radio broadcasting, sports, play-by-play -play interviews. So they never saw my face. The whole, whole idea of getting on camera was kind of a freaky thing for me, honestly, when I first made the switch. But what's it like for you to be the voice for a billion 
devices that people listen to you every day. What's it like to be the voice of comfort, safety, navigation for people? You know, I I think it is such an immense concept that I, I cannot quite even process it because, <laughs> you know, people will come up to me and they want to share their stories, their travel stories, the wonderful places we've been together, uh, the interactions they've had with the voice. Uh, they'll want to yell at tell me how they um you know apologize for yelling at me or for cursing at me or swearing at me so it's it's interesting to me that people do develop such a rapport and really a relationship with that voice and it does make sense you know you're driving you're on on a dark road maybe it's at night and it could be raining you're lost you take a wrong turn and there's that voice of reason that companion. And so I understand that and people do humanize that and do humanize that with me. Uh, so, you know, I do actually have a beautiful connection with people who feel very familiar with me right away. It is all odd, let's face it. It's really odd. But I do wanna say in terms of this period of time with AI and this ne kind of next phase of that, that we're all yeah. looking at right now and working out how to navigate, um, my voice being a part of that device for all these years was really an early part of that. Well, yeah, I mean, you helped pioneer something. Again, it was right. a voice on your apparatus. You had one option. Then they started to add these options in. And yes. you could personalize your phone. And then also, for me being a visual guy, I'm thinking, well, I wonder if she looks like Olivia Newton-John. You did not. Yes, I did. That's not, no, well, because I love Olivia Newton-John. I love her voice. I grew up with her. I love Australia, so I haven't been there. I got to go. But I thought, if she looks like Olivia, this is a great voice. <laughs> ah, so when I was a little girl, I was uh, in, I grew up in a town called Mackay, a tropical town near the Great Barrier Reef. It's a beautiful uh, turquoise blue water, sugar white sand, nine out of the 10 most poisonous snakes in the world, paradise. And uh, when I was a little girl, I was, watching TV and on came the most important and influential person in the world, Olivia Newton-John. And I saw her and I, my life changed. You know, I had direction. She was my inspiration, this blonde Australian woman who was a singer, who came to America. Everybody loved her. I wanted to be just like her. So it's amazing to me that you mention Olivia Newton-John because she was my childhood oh, inspiration. Absolutely. And again, having... Seriously, having your voice versus the American voice, it was a different, I mean, the message is the same, but the personality of voice came through differently. It was like, I really like this. Now, I have had Siri. I asked Siri, if, if, if you don't know these tricks, by the way, you can have Siri do fun things with you. She can tell you jokes. Um, I asked Siri to, every time the phone rings, tell me, Batman, you have a phone call. And you said, Batman, I have a phone call. <laughs> Does that, um, does it make you smile? It does. <laughs> it's very amusing. <laughs> because I, I customized a series to meet my personal needs. <laughs> I love it. You know what? I'm all about, you know, I, I, I believe that we're either lifting people up or dragging them down. And to me, that's you being very active in, in lifting yourself up. And I think that's beautiful. Now, were you always wanting to be on stage? Because again, you are a singer, you are an author, you have this amazing history with GPS, but I know your career has expanded massively. And we're going to talk about that tonight, but did you always want to be on stage? Yeah. Ever since I was tiny, I had huge dreams and I imagined my voice being everywhere and my songs being everywhere. And it's, it's fascinating to me that I, I think I wasn't quite specific enough in the way I was dreaming because my voice is everywhere. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, you know, it's coming out of the GPS and the phone, not necessarily out of yet out of the car radio, which, of course, is a thing of the past as well. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, my um, I had really huge global dreams and, and just wanting to be a part of that world where people got to connect with people from the stage and, and screen and uplift people through music so and we're, we're talking about the music we're talking about the other aspects i do did you have any family members that did not know you're the voice of siri and at some point they call you up and say 
I gotta ask you. Huh? <laughs> and did you have that happen? Um, not with family members, but with friends. And uh, in fact, my the first time I found out that my voice was in iPhones was because my girlfriend in California called me and she said, look, they've got this new virtual assistant thing, voice assistant in the new iPhone. This was in 2011, I think. And she said, it is you, it's your voice. And I was like, I, I had no clue what she was talking about because we didn't know what a voice assistant was at that point. So that was a huge, gosh, moment to be like, really? And my voice is in all these devices everywhere around the world. I mean, it took me a long time to even begin to be able to fathom that. So when you go into the studio, do they give you key phrases and help generate yes. and then the voice machine takes over after that? So after I won the job, they took me upstate to Ithaca, New York. They put me in a hotel for three weeks. They said, we have this script. It is like the size of a phone book, like a massive script. And they needed me to record for 50 hours to create oh. this voice system. So they broke it up into four hours a day and they didn't want my voice to sound tired or fatigued in any way. So four hours a day uh, in the studio, they picked me up at the hotel, took me to the studio, and it was, uh, they, they, they needed me to sound calm and consistent. So that is what happened. And we did that for, you know, in the, in the mornings I would record, in the afternoons I would rest my voice, go back to the hotel room. And uh, after three weeks, they'd captured every combination of syllables possible. So they could chop that up and create a voice system based on my speaking voice. So in the radio business, I did voiceover, thing like that. I got paid by the client for the commercial, how long they expected the, the ad to run. We got paid based on those demographics. The usage, yeah. Yeah, so, but you're used over and over and over again. Did they even plan for the volume when they worked with you without disclosing any financial deals? Did they really have any idea how powerful this would become in our daily lives? I don't know if they knew that. I certainly didn't know that. Uh, and yeah, I like the idea of being paid for the usage. That would be nice. Even point something, something, something. That would be, that would be very nice. <laughs> now, did they coach you to have the Siri voice they wanted, even though it was an Australian accent? Did they, or did you develop it yourself and say, here's what I think Siri should sound like? Or is it legitimately just you talking and doing it? It was a, it was an original voice system that was used for multiple uses. So it, when I recorded it, it was a standalone uh, text-to-speech voice system, which then was used for other uses. Mm -hmm. So when I did the recording, they, they just, you know, they described the kind of sound that they wanted, and then it was definitely my voice. And in fact, in, in many of the devices my voice shows up in, it'll say Australian Karen. It's actually got my voice. And if you take any any mo mobile phone, iPhone yeah. or uh, Android phone, mm -hmm. anywhere in the world, and you go into the um, accessibility mm -hmm. app, uh, my voice is there as a selection to help people who are uh, limited in their vision. And so imagine if you couldn't see and you press your phone and as you press the different icons it'll say uh mail phone uh health and you can click on it and then it'll help guide you through so my speaking voice is the companion to people who have low to no vision and it's i've i've got a, an entire community there of people who um you know i'm literally their their eyes and their voice for everyday life, which to me is a really special outcome of this kind of amazing technology. Now, I know you've also taken, we were both part of the NSA, the National Speakers Association. And have you ever been in a car, going someplace in the back seat, and you hear them using the app, but then you jump in, not letting them know it? And do you give navigational directions just to freak people out? Have you heard stories? Because yes, I have done that. And it's super fun. No, I that. haven't heard stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. And it's it's just the best fun to be at the backseat driver in real life. 
<laughs> oh, I wish I had a hidden video camera for that. But you are in the National Speakers Association. You do speak on stage. And it's interesting because you've now taken what being the GPS girl is all about. And you now speak on this idea of recalculating Calculating. Your career. Yeah. Yeah. How did yeah. that happen? I, I think it's a great branding marketing idea. Super. Thank you so much. So I took, uh, you know, it took me a while, but I knew there was something in it because because people were so familiar with me when they would meet me. And ultimately, I made this connection between directions in the car and directions in life. And I created a brand called the GPS Girl. It's an empowerment brand. And I took that word recalculating and I created the five directions for recalculating because I discovered that if we could use that power of recalculating you know when we're in the car and we take a wrong turn and satellites work their magic and then we start again and we are headed to our destination if we could do that in real life we could use the that ability to um to begin anew at any moment and so i speak to groups nationally and internationally about recalculating and navigating change powerfully i think it's an amazing blending of the voice, the branding, and what you do. And again, I, I know the five tips. We're not going to give them all the way, but I will ask you one of them. I like the idea of embrace the steering wheel. <laughs> What's that well, all about? What that's about is if once you've noticed that uh, things aren't going the way that you want them in a particular situation, and it could be something small, it could be a major life moment, um, and you do reassess and you make a, a shift, you know, you are open to doing something another way. When you do recalculate and redefine what the destination is, where you are actually headed, there's a moment where being able to take a deep breath and get yourself ready to go for it and to move into that direction that's what how i refer to embracing the steer, uh, steering wheel it's like okay i'm going to put my hands on the steering wheel i'm going to take a deep breath and i'm getting ready to go for it it's almost like centering ourselves geeing ourselves up for this uh new opportunity or new possibility and this can be actually even better than where you originally thought you were headed and Look, life is, um, and the, the more years of experience we have, not that being a young person is, mm. is all simple and, and roses either, but, you know, life will hand us certain experiences and it can be, um, it, it does take, in my experience, it takes tremendous effort to stay clear, to stay focused, to make our quality of life and our health and our well-being and, uh, our daily experience being a positive, it, that can take effort and energy and mindset. And, you know, the tools that I share are all about that. They're all about you individually, each one of us having the ability to create a life we absolutely love. And we can do that by making tiny steps frequently. We don't have to throw everything out and start again all the time, mm -hmm. but, um, but we, can, we can get a little battered, battered down by life. And this is about being able to take a deep breath, take the next step in the direction of exactly how we would love our life to look and keeping ourselves even along the way. I love that. And again, I'm, I'm sure it connects and lands very well with people because that's exactly this type of stuff that we're trying to figure out is how to navigate, how to go the right direction. All that fits so easily in everyone's lifestyle and conversation, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And it, and really, um, I think we all deal with our own levels of self-worth and, and challenges around that. And when when someone says, oh, but you have the power, it's actually your own inner sense of self. It's your, your, you just search inside, you'll have the answers. And we think, how can that be? But it is, uh, it's certainly my, uh, my experience and my discovery with myself and with a lot of people I highly admire around me, that that is the case. And I talk about listening to your inner GPS. It's what I, 
refer to as that inner sense of self, your, your true self, your instincts, people call it a lot of different things, but being able to quiet the noise, which yeah. also takes effort in mm -hmm. today's modern society and know that if you can, you know, take time out and, and get quiet, your inner GPS will send you the right way for it's you. It's the hardest thing to do is to be still and listen. It's the hardest thing in the world to do, but when you do it, it's amazing how many things smooth out and do fall in place. It also, it, 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 I think it can be challenging because we think, how can that be the answer? How can that, that doesn't cost me anything. It's like right available to me all the time. It mustn't be the magic pill. There must be something else. I must have to go and invest $20,000 in some massive coaching program to get the results I want, which what? is fabulous. If that's your jam, go for it. <laughs> so there are some amazing people to work with, but truly the, the most powerful work is to be able to sit quietly and uh, mm. I recently had an experience of um, meeting somebody extremely high end um, leading uh, executive. And I invited that person to meditate with me and they said, okay, but 20 minutes was too long. Oh. And, and that's okay. But it taught me that not everybody it, like it, there is a skill to yeah. build, to be yes. able to be with your own thoughts. Well, speaking about skills and voice, you're a highly accomplished singer songwriter. And uh, in fact, music with a message, a cinematic message. Now I've watched some of your videos. I've listened to your music. I get the cinematic vibe to what you're doing because you bring power to the piano. You bring quiet into the piano, the orchestration behind you. It's very cinematic and I love how did you, how did Harry Connick Jr. come up with this idea that you're hypnotic? That's, I wasn't. That's, that's a great tag. Isn't that lovely? Um, I had the great fun of being a guest on Harry Connick Jr.'s national talk show uh, several years ago. And during our conversation, um, he he just looked up and he said, said that um, you're, you're hypnotic. <laughs> I was like, okay. Oh, yeah, that was really uh, an amazing mo moment. But thank you for mentioning the music because I've writ written songs since I was very small, since seven years of age, and melodies and lyrics came into my head and words, and I wasn't quite sure what to do, but I mm -hmm. felt like they were important and I needed to figure out how to write them down. And I, since that time, I've been writing songs, and in, and in particular in the last five years, it's been the most creatively free period of my life and i've recorded five albums in the last five years uh i've only released three of those one of them just came out last friday and i have two more ready to go um a lot of songs about the human condition our quest for meaning in life um and then also different aspects of uh, the kinds of challenges to do with relationships and grief and equality and you know different issues that are really important to all of us well speaking about equality for those of us streaming along watching from the states you did something pretty dramatic in october 9th 2012 australia's first and so far only female prime minister was in control uh julia gillard i believe is, and was her name delivered a speech and that speech actually was put to music, word for word, and you sang it. Tell us about that, because I watched it, I listened to it. That speech threw some serious punches. Let's go through the opposition leaders, repulsive double standards, repulsive double standards, when it comes to misogyny and sexism. We are not supposed to take seriously that the leader of the opposition is offended by Mr. Slipper's text messages when this is the leader of the opposition who has said... How did you come about with that? How did you get permission to bring that to music? Amazing. Thank you for, for asking about that project. I was watching a television show called Ms. Represented, and that show 
was about the history of Australian women in politics. And they got to the part that Annabelle Crabb, the interviewer, uh, reached the part where she was interviewing uh, the former Prime Minister of Australia, Julia Gillard, about the impact of her iconic misogyny speech delivered in 2012. And as she was interviewing her, it was like a bolt from the blue and I just raced to my computer. I searched up a transcript of that speech. I printed it out. I raced to my piano, which apparently there was urgency because I was racing and I got to the piano and I put the script up there the, of the transcript up there and I put my hands down on the piano and the music was just there and I started to compose and I spent four hours on that first day um, just just truly overtaken by this 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 desire to create setting this um speech to music and then i came up for air and i realized this was a much bigger project than just a few hours at the piano and i felt compelled to set this entire 15 minute speech to music word for word and what ultimately i created is the misogyny opus which is a 55 minute uh pop orchestral work well again it is nominated for an air award for pop orchestral comp uh, composition and congratulations on all that that's amazing but i do have to ask you because it's not just you most videos are the artists or the band or some big blow up movie action scene you literally incorporated other people and again i saw nsa friends in that video but they lip sync and join you and you drop them in and brought other people in to a very powerful song where did that vision come from because that's just not singing the song and doing the song which is again mind-blowing you literally brought other real people into a real life event again that was it was a vision of mine that i just followed through with and i invited and re had recordings from 70 equality advocates from around the world many of our colleagues at the National Speakers Association and additional uh, people doing incredible work in the equality space uh, globally. And I asked them to each lip sync a section and then Chris Orbert, the phenomenal editor uh, out of Colorado, Emmy award winning editor, he put, brought that together and Tanya De Derville uh, filmed my part of it at the Mackay Entertainment and Convention Centre in Mackay. And just we brought that project together with a lot of uh, contribution from a lot of people yeah. who all share that same uh, desire to increase equality. Well, we'll have the link in the show descriptions for misogyny opus. And I do have to ask you, what was it like when you called up the prime minister and said, by the way, cool speech. I loved it. Do you mind if I sing it? I I wasn't quite sure how to go about that. And initially when I realized, oh my gosh, I need permission. I've worked for hours on this and these aren't my words. I'm used to being the lyricist as well. And I asked a few people how I would go about getting this permission. Uh, they didn't seem to know. So I went with my instinct, which was I went to her website and there was a contact page on her website because um, Julia Gillard does uh, now uh, incredible work. She has a global Institute for women's leadership. Mm. She's heavily involved in the equality space and, uh, in her post prime ministerial work. And I went to her website and I wrote her a note and I let her know about the project and I requested permission to use the words, which she agreed to. Um, and I'm of course, elated that that is the case and uh, went ahead and completed this entire work, which is, you know, it's 18 different sections, like 18 small movements yeah. making up this entire pop orchestral work. It's, it's, it's no joke to sit and listen to this entire piece because it is, um, as you said, there are, there are some um, really oh. extremely intense uh, parts of this speech. Oh, she, yes. Her eloquence is, is unparalleled. It, it really is. And to have that be something that you brought to life, carrying on the message, it, it's really powerful and, and incredible work. Congratulations on doing all that. But Thank you. I've also got to go back to what would you consider yourself? You're a singer, songwriter, author, public speaker. You, you are a global voice, truly. Are you an entertainer, 
a business? What are you when people say, what do you do? You know, when I'm at the, uh, filling out the, you know, what's your occupation? Yes. I do, I do write down entertainer, but when you describe all of those different things, I, I mean, I've, at, at the heart of it, I'm a creative, you know, I'm a, I'm a creative and I, I am, I'm just happiest when I have a creative project. I love to create and I love to connect. So for me to create in my own space, in my home studio, right at the edge of the Great Barrier Reef, looking at the ocean from my grand piano, I mean, that's a dream come true to create that kind of um, environment that's been a life dream check. And, wow. you know, I'm writing, I'm recording with my producer back to New York remotely. And then I go out into the world uh, and, and, to, and travel to different cities around the world to perform live, which, mm -hmm. and then I, I work for my speaking clients, uh, again, uh, taking the message of recalculating and that it is never too late to recalculate to stages. Um, and I, I travel from my base there to wherever that may be across Australia or in the United States or around the world. And so I feel very fortunate because I'm really clear I'm about creating and connecting and making, um, being able to shine light and uh, on truths in the world. Well, and the idea of it's never too late to recalculate. Did you come up with that for branding before pandemic or after or during? Because we all, I hate it. We pivoted, but everyone right. had to recreate themselves. Everybody had to do it. And we're still yeah. trying to fumble our way through this. Was, was we are. <laughs> idea? Are we going? Yes, it was. And in fact, I wrote the book, um, recalculate in 2016 so it was it was previous to it but yeah that message it just it's it's an evergreen message but never more appropriate than right now because we are all grappling with okay now what and i have you know a lot of people i'm close to in my life who are really assessing how they spend their time, what they really want their future to look like, yes. what they are really creating. And, you know, I do say it is never too late to recalculate. I, I truly believe that. Um, and, you know, at any point we can make, we can take steps and actions uh, in the direction of something we would love to be doing. And all we have is, you know, this moment and then this next moment and then this next moment. So why not choose to do something you really enjoy? So of all the things you get to do, what is it that I Karen think it's, it's really a loves to do? It really I love is. You know, songs. I started out. I love to write songs and record with music songs and perform I, songs. All I wanted to do and was to you know, I love create. People. Make, so I love to, and I love growing music, I love, and I did that um, I was developing so I love week, being in, in conversations with, with my jazz my loved trio ones and with friends about sessions what's during possible. the day that just is music 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 the whole time just and heaven to me so between that and the music that I also saw where that people what I were adore. performing so that for those that are I regular watchers of the show you, so you, I, you know I, 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 I kind of drink, took a look at but how to, backstage I, I tell everyone I guess how they did that it's just two friends sitting on the back porch taking a sip and sharing stories and having a good time. That's what the show is really all about. And it sounds like that's really you to a core, isn't it? Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> so let me bring up your website because you have so much cool stuff going on, but I want people to be aware of how to find you, where to go to, and what are they gonna find here? Because you've packed that website really well. Thank you very much. Well, you know, there's a lot of uh, speaking related information and empowering tools and messages uh then 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 of course the music so hit the qr code go scan it she does have links to the videos to the music to her public speaking it's all right there learn everything about karen jacobson again the uh gps girl and but much much more which is amazing that People know you by that, but do they know about the other aspects of you? Do, do they, they really know how rich and how deep and how full you are besides the GPS girl? Well, I really appreciate that you have taken the time to, you know, ask about that because I think all of us have so many different uh, layers to ourselves. And certainly in daily life, we can meet people and 
you know, we can talk on a very surface level, but by asking, you know, how are you really, you may, uh, you may hear a lot more, um, you may have much more of, an, of a connection to somebody and what they're really going through. And it's wonderful mm -hmm. that you take the time to do that with people. Well, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that's ever wondered who Siri was. I, I'm sure many people have thought they probably have an image of who you are. They have this idea of the, the person behind the voice. So it's, it's great to unpack all that and share the full 360 experience of who you really are. Because again, I think it's amazing that we know you by one voice but you've got so many other layers within you. And I was blown away. The deeper I dug, the, the more I listened, the more I read, it was like, you would never know that about Siri. <laughs> well, you know, be, I'm the original, my voice was the original Australian voice of Siri. And it's very interesting to me how it continues to be pop up in the strangest or the most unlikely of places and you know sometimes i will be i'll hop into a taxi cab and i'll be in the back seat and the in the front my voice is directing the driver and it just i mean it's odd <laughs> that has got to be weird i'm curious because you you said the siri thing kind of sort of fell into your lap a little bit you saw it and then you kind of went for it but how much of your career has been intentional Karen making it happen. How much is Karen being aware and hearing and stepping into the moment? You know, I, I, I your question is multifaceted and, and one part, one part of that I really want to address is that I was very much a make it happen, go out there and, and push the energy forward for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, about five years ago when I had an experience with it, there was a disappointment in my business and I was really, very upset about it and at that point i realized i needed to take i needed to stop the action i needed to take a break i needed to take a look at how i was operating and i did and i took a, a sabbatical for a period of time a few months and i i stopped going to networking events and i stopped making plans and i just gave myself some time out and some mm -hmm. quiet to listen and when I woke up in the morning, my job for the day was to listen and, and do what I, what I knew felt right for me. And that, that period is what really reconnected me with my creative songwriter side. Mm -hmm. uh, and at that point is when I did a transcendental meditation course and I now meditate 20 minutes a day, twice a day. I write a song a week. I'm part of a songwriter master, mastermind where I'm writing frequently. Um, and as a result, my speaking business went to higher heights. My life went to higher heights. Uh, my relationships, it's, it's really powerful when you're able to uh, take time out to, to be, to listen, to think. And then I really was listening for what life wanted of me mm. as opposed to going out there and doing what I wanted. Yes. from life and that's that continues to be a dance and a journey and i um i studied with a, an incredible coach called sophie mclean during that period of time and learned a lot of additional tools that have helped me tremendously so listening for what life wants of us is the other piece to of the answer to your question it's one thing to listen to yourself but yeah. then how does what you really want to spend your time doing, how does that match with the opportunities life is, is bringing your way and the intersection of those two? Karen Jacobson, I love it. Thank you very much for sharing here today. And uh, again, you hear on your phone all the time for the Australian Siri voice. You can turn it on right now. Go to those settings, turn it on. You'll have Karen with you all the time. Karen, thanks again for taking the time and being with us here today on Rock the State Show. Oh, thank you. And you have reached your destination. <laughs> now, that's a great way to finish the show up right there. That, that's a great way to sign it off and back this up. Hey, thanks, everyone, for being here tonight and walking Rock, Rock the State Show. And again, you can find a lot of information on that website that Karen has. But also, be aware, it's not just the voice of Siri. You heard the depth, the richness of career. And more and more, many of us are learning 
you don't have to be one dimensional. You can do multiple things now as you recalculate, recreate your life. And I, I, I encourage you, like Karen was saying, explore it, dream about it, step into it, uh, because we have more opportunity than you could ever imagine if you just take time to go figure it out. That's going to do it for today. I'm the Trigger Rich Bond Trigger. We'll be back here next week, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Remember, we're on PPN, the Public Place Network, now streaming in 17 countries worldwide through PPN. And, of course, on the YouTube channel, you can join us every Sunday night for the live chat. You are doing it right now. There's a premiere party every Sunday night with a new show, new guests, and we go deep in unscripted conversations each and every week. Join us back here at 7 p.m. Eastern time for another edition of Rock the Stage Show.